Jehovah's judgments against law-defying people are always carried out. But he never fails to give warning in advance. As the prophet Amos says, For the sovereign Lord Jehovah will not do a thing unless he has revealed his confidential matter to his servants the prophets. Noah was called by the apostle Peter a preacher of righteousness. And he continues to say, And by reducing the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, Jehovah condemned them, setting a pattern for ungodly persons of things to come. look disturbed, Noah. Is something wrong? There's disturbing news in the city. Very disturbing. What is it? The people are saying that the Nephilim made a raid on a little settlement south of here yesterday. They're getting bolder every year, aren't they? This time their fathers, the materialized sons of God, were with them. They ordered their giant sons to carry off everything they pointed out to them. When will Jehovah call them to account for their violence? They even took women from among them as wives for themselves. More wives? Of whomever they chose. <sighs> Jehovah will not remain silent forever. His judgment will certainly be entered against them. But look, here are Hull and Ruhema. Welcome to our house, Hull. And you, Ruhema, may you have peace. And you, Noah. Peace, Ruhema. Ah. Please, Hull, take your rest here. Have you heard the reports about the sons of God, Noah, and their new wives? I just came from the city. The people speak of nothing else. Some of the women even with envy. What do you think? Is it good or bad? Is it to angels that God has given the daughters of men? Or was it not of himself that Adam spoke when he said of the woman God gave him, This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Remember Enoch's prophecy from God to convict all the ungodly concerning all their ungodly deeds that they did in an ungodly way. Didn't I say to you, Hall, that Noah would speak nothing but bad? Quiet, Rohema. Noah's in the line of descent of Enoch, who is a prophet of the true God. A prophet of the true God does the work of a prophet. But Lamech, Noah's father, said of Noah, this one will bring us comfort from our work and from the pain of our hands resulting from the ground which Jehovah has cursed. But Noah doesn't bring us comfort. He speaks only judgments and denunciations from God. But Rohema, Noah speaks often of God's promise to restore mankind through the seed that he'll bring forth. Ha! Where is Enoch with his prophecy of God's execution of judgment against all? Has he not been dead these many years? Enoch walked with a true God, Ruhema, and God took him before his natural time. Perhaps God will take you too, Noah. Your course has disturbed the people all up and down the land, even as did Enoch's. I can only speak what I know and what I've seen of God's dealings with men. Abel was a righteous man, and he found favor in God's eyes. But he was killed for it, Noah. Yes, by his brother Cain, whose works were wicked. And Cain came under God's judgment. Can those who have gone in the path of Cain receive less at the hand of God? 
These judgments of God serve as warning examples oh, of... Oh, I am the most blessed of all women. I've been chosen by one of the sons of God to be his wife. Think of it. Come, you must help me prepare. He'll return to my father Bela's house to claim me toward the beginning of evening. Come, please. No, I cannot. You don't understand. This thing you're doing is not right. This is one of the sons of God who desires me. But think, Bethiah. Are not these angels who have not kept their original position going out after flesh for unnatural use? How can this be pleasing to God? You cannot destroy for me this destiny that has come to be mine. Perhaps the son that will be born to me by my angelic husband will even prove to be the seed promised by Jehovah in Eden. Take care, Bethiah, that in your desperation to convince yourself of the rightness of your course, you might not be found following in the path of Eve. No. Who also wanted to live a life of her own making yet lost everything. Oh, no! And who said when she gave birth to Cain, her firstborn, Look, I have produced a man with the aid of Jehovah. But did it turn out well with her son? Did he not bring death to his brother, rather than life to all mankind? You're a wicked man, Noah. You speak nothing but bad concerning the people. Don't be misled, Ruhema. The seed of Jehovah's promise in Eden will indeed come and will bring blessings to all who fear God. But he must come in Jehovah's way. Put your trust in Jehovah and come, don't... Come, Bethiah, my dear. Don't take to heart what Noah has said. We'll eat and drink and be joyful. No one knows what tomorrow will accomplish. I'll not listen to you, Noah. I'll not listen, not listen. Oh, the poor child. What a foolish, fatal decision she's made. And what of you, Hull? Every word you have spoken is true, Noah. But as for me, I don't know. I don't know. May peace come to be upon your house. And may you too have peace, Bethiah. Please take your rest here. Is all well? Oh, oh yes. My father Bela is doing better now that I am back home with him. He, he tells me now he, he never wanted me to marry one of the sons of God, but he had no choice. Neither did I, really. You, you know that, don't you? Noah spoke of it just this morning. He said, what has been done is done. But uh, now that your angelic husband has uh, taken another wife, will you continue living with your father? Y yes, he needs me. Of course, I have my fine son, Nephil, but, who... Bethiah, Nephil constantly associates with the men of renown. Uh, of course. Course, he is also a son of one but of the sons of God. doesn't it disturb you that they're feared so? That he might become like them? But why do you say that? It's true that all the offspring of the sons of God are giants among men, but the people don't fear them. They simply recognize their superhuman qualities. How then do you account for the many acts of violence that are occurring? The people are fearful. It, it isn't the men of renown or my son that are responsible. But if the people... Oh, 
Here come your sons. I, I'd rather not talk to anyone. I'll go. May you have peace. And may peace accompany you, Bathia. Has father returned yet from offering his sacrifice? Not yet. He's gone unusually long this time. Perhaps he's found someone with a listening ear. Father's a wonderful example of one who fears Jehovah. People all know him, but few pay much attention to him. How many listen to any of us when we preach to them? They're too busy with their own interests. Or following the men of renown in their acts of violence. It's frightening to hear of these things so often. Noah says... Mother, and you, Shem, and Japheth, and Ham. At last, Jehovah has answered our prayers. At last, Jehovah has expressed his indignation because all flesh has ruined its way on the earth. And hear this. Jehovah has said to me, The end of all flesh has come before the me. End? Of all flesh? Because the earth is full of violence because of them. And here I am bringing them yeah. to ruin together all with the earth. Flesh. All flesh. All flesh. Certainly Jehovah doesn't mean everything. Hear further what he's purposed to do and what he told me to do. He's commissioned me to build an ark. An ark? And all of us are to go into all it. All of us? Into an ark? And take in with us male and female of every living creature of every sort of flesh, two each of the unclean kind and seven each of the clean ones. You mean two of every living creature upon the earth? Flying creatures? And domestic animals? And all moving animals of the ground? According to their kinds. Seven each of the clean, and two each of the unclean will go in. Why, there are hundreds of different kinds of animals and birds. And they would have to eat. They would need food. And that would take an ark of tremendous size. But tell me, my father, why is it that we need an ark, and why must we all go into it? Because Jehovah has said he's going to bring a deluge of waters a upon the earth. deluge? To cover the earth to bring to ruin all flesh in which the force of life is active. Uh, to ruin. And, and where is all this water going to come from so that it will cover the earth? It will rain water from heaven until no flesh is left alive water. upon the earth. Rain water. Did Jehovah give you the proportions of the ark? Yes, he did. It's to be 300 cubits in length, 50 cubits in width, and 30 cubits in height. And it's to have three stories. Three hundred cubits in length? Mm. And when must it be finished? Jehovah hasn't said, but he must have in mind his own appointed time. We must begin at once. We'll join in the work. We will. We too will we build too. with you, Father. And you, Ham? It is Jehovah's will. Even so. So be it. See now. Here is the way it is to be. Bless our day's activity, that the work of our hands may be pleasing to you, and that we may do all your will in the preparing of the ark for the saving of many souls. Keep us free from the enemy, and our hearts devoted to the commission we have received at your hand. Amen. 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 Jehovah has blessed us with much to do. And has prospered the work of our hands thus far. The full size of the ark is beginning to take form now. And it's so much larger than I had even expected. We could put this whole house in it's ten times over. All the <laughs> <animals>. <laughs> too. Ham, did you return the small tools to my pouch last evening? No. I completed the tenons on the last two supports for the rafters and put them in my pouch under the bench by the well. Here, I'll get them for you. 
Come, Japheth. We'll join Shem and Ham outside. We'd best discuss our plans for today before we begin our work. Now, uh, Japheth, the beams of resinous wood that have been set in place are to be secured upon the rows of pillars. That will be your assignment. Good. Shem, you and Ham must see to the entrance of the ark that will be put in its side. Uh, yes. The doorposts are to be squared with a frame, even as we make provision for it in the framing of the exterior wall of the building. As you say. As for my part, I'll prepare the door itself with its pivots. We have uh, only tar enough prepared for this day's work, and one more. Yes. I must arrange for the women to see to it. Meanwhile, the three of you can begin your work. I'll join you in a moment. Mother? Mother? You called? We'll need more tar for overlaying the wood. You can begin preparing it after the noon meal. Or if you finish the regular morning tasks earlier, you can begin then. As you say, Noah. May you have peace, Noah. And may you have peace, Hull. Shem, Ham, and Japheth are working early. No, the sun has been up for some time, and we have much to do. You and your sons have spent so much time and effort on the building of the ark that, well, some are beginning to wonder what you really do intend to do with the building. It's so... So tremendously large, so immovable looking. But you and they all know the reason for its being constructed. I know, Noah. Everybody knows you're preaching about a coming flood of waters, and many have seen the ark. And... But you still can't believe Jehovah will wipe men whom he has created off the surface of the ground. You say you fear the true God, Hull. Then listen, carefully, and think of this. Many times I have reminded you of our forefather Adam. Yes. And when he acted rebelliously, in defiance of God's commandment to him, God executed the judgment he had pronounced against him. Yes, yes, Noah, everything you, you say is true. And what of Cain and Abel, my brother? Did not Cain, moved with envy, rise up against his brother and slaughter him? Uh, yes, Noah. Tell me, Hull, what did Jehovah, Abel's God, do to Cain? Tell me, Hull, what judgment did God pronounce against Cain because of his violent deed? I know, Noah. I know. Did God's judgment against Cain prove to come true, Hull? You know the answer, Hull. Yes, but... How then can the words of the prophet Enoch be less true? How can we deny God's purpose to execute that judgment against all law-defying people today? If only I could be sure, Noah. The way you speak, you'd almost persuade me, yet... Hull, the only way to be preserved alive is to join in the work of building the ark and go into the ark with me and my family. If Jehovah's judgment is so urgent, Noah, why has he waited so long to act? Rohema, must you speak so disrespectfully? Tell me, Noah, where is this promised deluge of his? Why, from the day Enoch fell asleep in death, all things are continuing exactly as from creation's beginning. Ruhema, it is Jehovah against whom For you are... For years, Noah, you've talked of the deluge that will wipe men whom God has created off the surface of the ground. From the time you began to build that... that building, I had a daughter who has grown and is married. And before you finish it, She'll have a daughter grown and married. Would you have us stop living until your job is done? Don't tempt God, Ruhema. If it's answers you honestly seek to your questions, <laughs> I'll stay. 
gladly and speak to you. But if it's only to ridicule, then I must leave and be about Jehovah's business. Answers? Oh, who would seriously listen to anything you have to say? Why, Noah, the people are laughing at you. Laughing! If the very ground were to open up and the waters gush forth and all the rivers of the earth were to flow by here, they could not lift that gigantic building one cubit off the ground. Oh, you and your family and all the animals? Oh, never, never. <laughs> God has told you and all your household to go into the ark? And that he told you to take all the animals, too? Look for yourself, Hull. Already they're in the ark and being settled in their places. Didn't you see what Shem, Ham, and Japheth are doing right now? Yes, but... It was seven days ago that Jehovah said, For in just seven days more I am making it rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights. This is the seventh day. Rain for forty days and forty nights? But you've been speaking of rain for many years now, Noah. And now Jehovah's time limit has expired. You seem so sure of that, Noah. Why should I not be, Hull? It is Jehovah's word. But during all these years of preaching, and right up till now, the people have been eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. And still, they take no note, nor will they believe that Jehovah's warning is true. The time has arrived. It is almost the hour. Can you not yet manifest that faith in God necessary to take this step to the saving of your soul, you and your family? I don't know. I don't know. You seem so sure, Noah. How can you be? But going into the ark like this and shutting everything else out... It's, uh, it's so, so final. Suppose it doesn't rain. What, what will all the people say then? No, I cannot. Mother, have the wives bring the rest of the things on the bench by the well. As you say, Noah. Father wants the sacks on the bench by the well. As you say, Mother. <laughs> Where's your mother? Inside the house. <laughs> oh, what can I do? What can I do? Messiah, is that you? Why are you crying so? <laughs> what do I have to live for? I have no one left. No place to turn or go. But aren't you living with your son, Nephil, since your father died? For several years. <laughs> but now he's put me out. <laughs> put you out? I drove me out. <laughs> He doesn't want me anymore. I'm old, useless. <laughs> How could he? It's so cruel, <laughs> so heartless. <laughs> My son. Would you 
even now come into the ark with us to the preserving no. of your life? No, I cannot. I cannot. Neville would be very angry. I dare not. But you said... It's too late. No. Oh, maybe that's Neville now. If she only knew how soon it will all be over. Is everything ready? Quickly, come, take the things you have there, and we'll go, quickly. It seems like hours since Jehovah shut the door of the ark. Yes, it does. Though it hasn't been, really. Yet Jehovah said, In just seven days more, I am making it rain upon the earth. True. And this is the seventh day. And the day is well spent. It is. And Jehovah's word is certain to be carried out. What will it be like, Father? No one can foresee that. Jehovah has said that he would cause it to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. It will, just as Jehovah has said. Do you think we'll have much longer to wait? The day is well spent. It must certainly come soon. But we're ready. The commission that God has given us is finished. The ark has been built according to all that God has spoken. Every kind of animal is here with us, and the birds, and the moving creatures, all here, inside this one building. And food for all, for them and for us, for many days. Just so. Jehovah has brought us thus far. He certainly will be able to carry us through the remainder of his way according to his purpose. May the sacrifice that we offered this morning prove to be acceptable to him, and may he now fulfill his purpose toward all mankind through me and through you, my sons, and all our wives. Your word has proved to be true. Salvation belongs to Jehovah. May Jehovah be praised. The record in Genesis tells us, And the deluge went on for forty days upon the earth. And the waters kept increasing and began carrying the ark and it was floating high above the earth. Thus Jehovah wiped out every existing thing that was on the surface of the ground, from man to beast, to moving animal, to flying creature of the heavens, and they were wiped off the earth. 
and only Noah and those who were with him in the ark kept surviving. Jehovah had executed his judgment on that law-defying generation. But later generations would not benefit from this lesson. Within five centuries, in the district of the city of Sodom, as the Apostle Peter later testifies, the man Lot was greatly distressed by the indulgence of the law-defying people in loose conduct. For that righteous man, by what he saw and heard while dwelling among them from day to day, was tormenting his righteous soul by reason of their lawless deeds. And remember, what happened is a warning to us. I saw the young men you're to marry as I sat in the city gate this morning. And I didn't like what I saw or what I heard. It was like the senseless men of the city that they spoke. Don't be too hard on them, Lot. It's only since we've come to live in the city that they've come to know anything at all about the true God. That's been long enough for them to know that the true God does not approve of the wicked things practiced by the men and even the boys of this city yet they refuse to break off their association with them. I would wish that they didn't talk so much about the vile practices of the men of the city. I know. And even when I object... It disturbs me, too. Why, just yesterday, they were telling me about the two men who live in the house next to them, and they spoke as though it were nothing, too. But I changed the subject. I would postpone their marriage to you, my daughters, even though you've been promised, until some better evidence of their love for God is manifest. Still, perhaps when they're married, their closer association with us will help them see the wrongness of the people of the city. And perhaps it will join us more fully in our worship of Jehovah. After all, who else is there for our daughters to marry? Must we continue to live in the city, Father? Sometimes it frightens me. I have Where then would you have us live? Would you have us go back to dwelling in tents with the herds and the flocks? It couldn't be so bad. Everything there is so, so impermanent. I know the city's bad, but there are so many benefits in living as we do here. It's so much more secure. Mother. How can there be security with the indulgence of these law-defying people and their loose conduct? Most of them are very bad, I know. But the man with whom you've contracted to build houses for our daughters and their husbands when they marry, he isn't like the others. At least... Has he come to worship the true God? Well, no, but... And yet I've talked to him many times about the God who preserved Noah and his family through the flood and who's led Abraham here into the land of Canaan. But we don't associate with the people of the city, except to buy all the good things to be found in the marketplace. Where could we get all the choice food and wine and beautiful materials for clothing if we were tenting someplace outside the city? Perhaps not, Mother. But I wonder... How long can we continue in association with such lawless ones and not be affected by them? Are any of the so-called good things of the city worthwhile in view of the wickedness of the people themselves and the danger to us to become like them? We must hope for the best. And perhaps we must put up with the bad in order to receive the good. Besides, we are no part of the activity of the city and its ways. We can live with them without being affected by them and still enjoy what the city has to offer. For how long? 
And how long will Jehovah continue to hear the cry of complaint about Sodom and Gomorrah and their sin? How very heavy it is. Will he not someday in his wrath sweep it away? And then, where will we be? Now two angels from Jehovah arrived at Sodom by evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. You're strangers to our city, my lords. Do you have business here? Only for tonight. Tomorrow we must be on our way. Please now, my lords, turn aside, please, into the house of your servant, and stay overnight and have your feet washed. Then you must get up early and travel on your way. No, but in the public square is where we shall stay overnight. No, my lords. It would be most unfitting for you to stay in the public square. Are you not new here? And might not your staying in the gate of the city become a matter of shame to us? Please, my lords, for your own safety, turn aside, please, under the shadow of my roof and stay overnight. Let it be, then, even as you have said. You have indeed shown to us, as strangers in your city, the spirit of generosity. And the feast that we have enjoyed at your hand is most welcome. Am I not your servant, my lords? And is not my home yours while you are with us in the city? Your wife and your two daughters share your spirit of hospitality. Thank you, my lords. It will not be forgotten. But come now. Your journey has been long, and you are tired. Let me show you where you may lie down that you may get up early and travel on your way. It's the men of Sodom, my lord. They surrounded the house. house. From boy to old man. All the people in one mob, father. Please, my brothers, go away. Do not raise this disturbance. Well then, bring them out. Have not these strangers come here for the night to rest, in order that they may be up early and travel on their way tomorrow? Not so, Lot. These men have not come to rest. Bring them out to us. Would you keep them both to yourself? Do not act so badly, my brothers. Please, go to your homes. These men have come in peace. Can you not too be peaceable? Go home, Enough please! Of this, Lot. Bring these men out to us that we may have intercourse with them. Bring them out to us. Where are the men, Lot? We do not want you. We want the men who came into you. Please, my brothers, do not act badly. Here I have two daughters who have never had intercourse with a man. We do not please want your daughters. Let me bring them out to you. Then do to them as we is good want in the your men. eyes. Only to these men do not do a thing, because that is why they've come under the shadow of my roof. How then can I allow any harm to come to them? Stand back there! This lone man came here to reside as an alien, and yet he would actually play the judge. See now how he mocks us? Now we're going to do worse to you than to them!
O Jehovah, may they receive in themselves the full recompense which is due for their bad deeds. Strike now this people with blindness, please. Do you have anyone else here? Yes. Your daughters and all who are yours in the city, bring out of the place. We're bringing this place to ruin. To ruin? Because the outcry against them has grown loud before Jehovah, so that Jehovah sent us to bring the city to ruin. And when will this be? Is it soon? You must leave now if you are to be saved. But it's nighttime. Tomorrow we'll start to get ready. But mother, the man said now. See now, the bread is not ready for tomorrow. I must mix up the dough and put in the leaven, or we'll have only unfermented cakes to eat tomorrow. If the city is to be destroyed, where are we to go? You must escape to the mountainous region. You must not stay anywhere on the plain, or you will die. Father, what of our husbands? Are they to perish also with the men of the city? Go, quickly, and tell those who are yours for you must leave the city at once. Hence Lot went on out and began to speak to his sons-in-law who were to take his daughters. And he kept on saying, Get up, get out of this place, because Jehovah's bringing the city to ruin. But in the eyes of his sons-in-law, he seemed like a man who was joking. However, when the dawn ascended, then the angels became urgent with Lot. Lot, look, dawn has ascended. Get up now, take your wife and your two daughters who are found here, for fear that you may be swept away in the air of the city. At once, my lord. Come, girls, help your mother, for we must go at once. Let me get just these few more things, Lot. Please, my lord. What would she bring now? Is it anything of importance? Look, the dawn has ascended. Why do you keep lingering? Leave behind even your outer garment. Come, quickly. But I can't leave so quickly. Surely it's reasonable that we be allowed more time. How can we go just like this and leave everything behind? Escape to the mountainous region for fear you may be swept away. Hurry, come this way, quickly. Escape for your soul. Do not look behind you and do not stand still in all the district. Must we hurry so? Do not stand still! Escape for your soul! Then Jehovah made it rain sulfur and fire from the heavens upon Sodom and Gomorrah. So he went overthrowing these cities and all the inhabitants of the cities and the plants of the ground. Lot's wife began to look around. No, mother, no! Mother, please! And she became a pillar of salt. <laughs>